late. How, uh, how's everybody doing? Hey. In that case, let's get started. Who here can give me a brief explanation of the multiverse theory? Yes, uh, Daniel. Carter, go. Uh, it's a theory that states there are more than one universe to our own. There are an infinite number of different universes that run separate but parallel to our own. That's correct. That's very good. Now, everyone, uh, I want you all to take a second. Think of a, uh, a significant moment in human history. It can be wars, genocides, presidential elections, civil rights movements, what have you. And, and imagine a moment where your event never occurred. Picture a, uh, a world where Hitler never rose to power, so the Nazis never invade Poland. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald never shoots JFK. What if I told you that these, uh, these realities, these alternative timelines, do in fact exist. The multiverse theory states that every possible eventuality exists in its own dimensional plane. This here is our timeline. This is the reality that you and I have come to know. Be for present. Now, this morning, I woke up here with a headache. It was terrible. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, I felt like shit. Now, there's no law that says that I have to teach my class. What I could have done is I could have, uh, I could have woke up. I could have drove to the pharmacy here and picked up some Advil. I could have gone back home. And by right now, I would be at home relaxing for the rest of the day. We have, uh, we have so little power in this world. <coughs> Natural disasters kill thousands of people every year. Diseases even more so. And there's war and famine, crime, and the, the whims of an ever-expanding universe that threatens any and all life, daring enough to set foot off their own little blue dot. And in the face of all that, I find comfort in the fact that I possess the power of choice. I have the power to make decisions for myself, to be wrong, to be right. I have the power to make a choice. And if I had chosen differently this morning, then all of you would have stayed home, or you, uh, I don't know, whatever it is that you kids do nowadays. And so if that's true, if that is the case, then our choices can literally define the universe. Isn't that amazing? I guess that's all for today, then. Uh, please, for the love of God, read chapter 3 for Monday. And as I'm sure you all know, there will be a test a week from Wednesday. Have a nice day.
your home early. Yeah, I had a bit of a, uh, <laughs> I think I just need a little, uh, a little rest. Well, uh, how was school? Fine. What, just fine? Yep. Did you learn anything? Nope. Huh. The teachers just keep talking about that storm thing. The, uh, storm thing. I'll be, uh, I'll be over here if you need me. Too seriously, do not worry about it. She spends the entire day staring at that screen. I'm sure it doesn't matter where we are. Oh, that reminds me. Russ, did you get him that new game he wanted for his birthday? Russ. Huh? RJ, did you get the birthday present for RJ, the game he wanted? No. Not yet, sorry. I swear, between the two of them, it's like I'm talking to myself half the time. So, Alex, I hear you have a new job. Um, yeah, they needed a meteorologist at Channel 20, so I took it. It's my first on-screen gig. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Excuse me. Okay, congratulations. It's been three days since the mysterious weather anomaly obstructed Manhattan's Midtown District. Officials can only speculate as to the origin of the storm, but there's no evidence to indicate Times Square thing, I think. Yeah. We've been covering it nonstop at work. I never seen anything like it in my life. Huge storm hits Manhattan, lasts like 12 seconds, and then ups and vanishes. Poof. Like it was never there. And to make things harder, we have absolutely no data on it. Some government agency stepped in and won't release the findings until they're experts have reviewed it. It's like they're trying to keep us in the dark. Okay, sorry, I have to go. I have a headache. Russ, we have Advil. Samuel Waters. I'd like a word with you. Did you, did you? You broke into my house? Oh, that's beside the point. Now, if you would, please take a seat. No, I. 
Okay, you know what? You know, my wife and my son are next door, so... Already taken care of. Taken care of? What, what do you mean, taken care of? What the hell does that mean? What Relax, is that? Mr. Wilkes. They're safe. Now, this is all very routine. difficult if you don't give us your complete cooperation. Now take a moment if you need it, and then let me know when you're ready to answer some questions. What do you want to know? Let's see, uh, why don't we start with December 24th, 1977. What about it? At approximately 11.40 p.m. on the aforementioned date, a lightning storm was detected in the vicinity of 3612 McKinley Court. your home address. It lasted 17 seconds and confined to one block radius. Now, at the time, we'd never seen anything like it. Meteorologists wrote it off as a Doppler malfunction of some sort. And it was mostly forgotten. And had not the same thing happened three days ago, it would have remained that way. Times Square. But I, I don't understand. I wasn't. Russ, I wasn't even in New York. I was. Russ, I, I may not be no philosopher like you, but I'm a firm believer in one thing. There are no coincidences. But I, 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 was, I was like what, ten years old at the time? I, come on, how could I possibly remember that? If you want to stay out of jail, you're gonna to have to try. Jail. Jail for, for what? On what charges? I haven't done anything. I'm just, I'm helping you for God's sake. Wait, Jay. Now, it's your lucky day. I'm in a pretty good mood, so you're going to get one last chance. Christmas Eve, 1977. Remember, there was a there was a, a storm or some there a, a, a flash of light lightning maybe I don't I, I saw like a a hut of some sort and uh, but that was it. That was all. I, 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 the next thing I know, I, I, I woke up. I, I was in my bed. I. Everyone told me it was, it was just a dream, and that was it. That's. 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 That's all. That's. That's all. I swear. What about the watch? It's family heirloom. No connection. No connection. No. You see, Russ. That's not exactly possible. This watch, it was produced with a highly advanced synthetic metal. Something far beyond anything we have this time. Wait, wait, Go, what is, what does that mean? It means that the same metal was used to design a food capsule. One that we found near Prospect Park just hours after the storm hit Manhattan. It's like I said earlier, there are no coincidences. Okay, I, I didn't design the watch. But somehow or another, you obtained it. This metal doesn't exist. 
Yet our data suggests that it was produced at least 20 years ago. I... I don't, I don't understand how that's, I don't, I don't, I don't, sorry, I don't understand how that's possible. Which would be why we're here. I'm going to make this very easy. You tell me what year you came from, and this can all be gone. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I... Hello? Yes, ma'am, I thought... No, ma'am, I understand. We'll be in in a second. You're gonna be coming with me. What? For? But 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 I, I'm I'm cooperating. <laughs> I was cooperating. Son, for a professor, you sure have a weak grasp on vocabulary. Next move is your choice. I hope it's the right one.